What's up, guys? Eric here, and we're still watching bad episodes of The Flash. We're still doing it. This is still a thing. <laughs> it's another retro reaction, rant, and review. We're going back. We're watching the top five worst ranked user-rated episodes of The Flash, according to IMDb. It's for IMDb. It's not me. This isn't my list. It's their list. So I'm going through. I'm using their list, and I did that specifically because I'm like, I don't want to take the heat for this. This isn't. These aren't my choices. Okay, it's not my choices. Uh, we're still doing this, and um, you know, so there you go. There's my disclaimer. I've had a few people asking me, Eric, why are you subjecting yourself to this? Why are you torturing yourself by watching these episodes that you know you're not going to like? Well. I mean, there's kind of some scientific reason for doing it, I guess. Okay, it's a little bit personal, I suppose. I like watching these shows or these episodes out of the seasons, giving them an opportunity to sort of maybe change a little bit for me and my thoughts and opinions on them. Uh, also, it's it's fun to see where we are now and like what was happening then. If they set up anything back then that later on became super important, that's kind of fun, you know. And it's also fun to go back and sort of re-cringe at these episodes that I probably only watched maybe once or twice, if that. Fun fact about this episode, let me pop this up on the screen here. This is season four of The Flash, episode 16, Run Iris Run. I was so annoyed with this episode that I didn't even do a proper rant and review for it. There is no rant and review for this episode of The Flash for me, which is weird because at this point I was trying, like The Flash was my primary show. And I think I only spoke about this episode during the after party. This is back when the after party was in, it was like two or three studios back. Anyway, there's no proper rant review for this. So I can't say like, go back and watch what I said about this before. Cause I'd have to like send you to a after party. And those early ones were not very, well done. I mean, the new ones aren't either, but those were really bad. Uh, anyway, it says here, after a run-in with a new sinister foe, Iris acquires all of Barry's speed and steps into a new role as the hero, hero, <laughs> hero who must protect Central City. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to click this and let's see what we got here. What if, what if I just, like, reach all three of the bus metas to, like, Earth 2? How about this? Why not do that? That so could have been a thing. I think I even said that a lot during the season. <laughs> this was after Barry had been in jail. This was after the whole like bus meta thing and then figuring out what DeVoe's plan is. Like this is literally like right in the end game of the season. I miss Earth 2 Harry. I miss like his banter with Cisco. I just miss his style. He was like the coolest. I know people would argue that maybe HR and some of the other ones have been cooler. Earth 2 Harry was the coolest Wells. You just go he was the coolest one. He stayed up all night doing this. Before we find out that um, how bad the loss of his intelligence is because of what he does. Before that, he was like, he was on the precipice of like figuring all this out. It's so sad what happened to him. What the waste, what a waste of a character. I say we explore it. Like everybody seems to be on board with this, I remember, except for Cisco. And looking at what actually happens to Harry because of this, I think Cisco's like fear of all of this was totally appropriate. He's t he's so right. Cisco is so smart. All this foreshadowing before like giving her powers and stuff. It's so weird because I think I remember being annoyed by this because I'm like, why does Iris care so much about what Ralph says to her? I mean, this was the season where Ralph was like so unlikable for like 70% of the season. So she gets so uptight and you can see it in her face there that she's upset about what Ralph is saying to her. I'm like, you're the leader of the team. You've been around since like ages ago. Why do you care what Ralph says about you. It just didn't make a lot of sense to me. And it really, really, really annoyed me. It's annoying me now. That's right. So Ralph impersonated DeVoe to get Barry out of trouble. And so now they're dealing with this. Uh, yeah, it's all this fallout from this. And they didn't want Barry back at the precinct. And Ralph didn't want to keep impersonating DeVoe. Yeah, it was, it was a whole weird thing. This scene is so funny to me. I have so many problems with the powers of this character. He's going to explain in a, in a bit, I think, or either we get an explanation for it. Um, you shouldn't be using the powers 
you've been given this that much heat in that space would have melted everything around it everything money I guess we don't get a total explanation now of how his powers work, but the amount of heat required, I think, to get through that door is so, it's such a large amount that it would have generated all this heat around the outside area. It would have been impossible to like focus it that way. I think they explain that here. Not only would he have melted the door, he would have melted all of the money inside of it. He would have melted, yeah, listen. It would have burned every. You know what? Let's let's just go on because I'm. I keep talking about it. And keep talking about it. It's gonna make me more and more angry. Ugh. She's only doing this because of the fact that Ralph gave her a hard time. She's not on the front line. She's not a superhero. So he made her feel bad. So now she's gonna go out in the field and put herself in harm's way. Oh, the infamous jacket to uh, Nora's suit. Right, we meet that in this episode. I remember the poster coming out for this now, with her in the in the jacket. And everybody's like, "Oh my god!" She wants people to know. She wants Ralph to know. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> it's the way it always works. That's why in Star Trek, it's always like they never want the captain to beam down. They're always like, "No." You can't beam down. You send your first officer. You send the red shirt. You never send the captain down. I mean, they do it anyway, but that doesn't change the fact that that's the way it usually works. All right, here we go. Matthew Kim. No, no. Let her go. This was always crazy to me because the he just jumped to a hundred, like from zero to a hundred. He doesn't seem like someone. Who would do something like this and then he does it and I'm like, what? You're not the only one that's been blessed with power. <laughs> I'm helping people too. Yeah, right. Look at what you're doing. So it's weird. Apparently his powers work through fabric. I got him. I lost my speed. What do you mean you lost? What difference does it make? His power is to take powers. He took your powers and he was running at normal speed. You probably could have caught him. That was so stupid. That was so, so stupid. Oh, here we go. You know, I guess we gave up a long time ago on speed destroying clothing. I don't ever remember when that actually happened, but now that I'm seeing this going on, it just reminds me that the suit I don't know what purpose it serves anymore for the Flash or any of the speedsters, honestly. Did we ever get an answer to why Iris's speed was purple? Other than making it look cool when Nora was running with two different colors? I don't know if we ever got an answer for that. I don't remember us ever getting an answer for that. I would think that having your power stolen, especially for a speedster, um... It would be really weird to come down from that. You know what I mean? Like, I get someone getting the meta DNA that gives them powers and learning how to use them or whatever. But someone like the Flash with like, it, it affects everything in your body, including your eating and your, I mean, everything you do. You would have a larger reaction to having your powers removed. Like, you know, I know we only have one episode, but I'm nitpicking at this point. There were so many people excited about Iris getting powers that they had no idea that it was going to be at the, you know, sacrifice of Barry having his powers. It was like, oh, how's she going to make up a speedster? What's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a dumb cap. It's supposed to be a thinking cap, but it's a dumb cap. I remember being annoyed by Harry acting like this, but knowing what's happening to him and how it's going to play out later on. I mean, it makes sense. But I'm just like, it's so out of character for him. Foreshadowing. I should have seen it coming all along. Oh, well. 
We're actually seeing numbers for speed. You would think that by now that Star Labs would have some more, I don't know, scientific thing to help stop a speedster from hurting themselves when they just stop running at full speed. More than just cardboard boxes and stuffings. Which, by the way, why do they, are, are, what are they still shipping out? Like, why do we have these brand new Star Lab boxes filled with, you know, styrofoam if they're not actually making or shipping anything, right? They're not doing anything else. So, why is that just hanging around? <laughs> because that's comforting. That's just totally okay. Okay, that was funny. <laughs> Bigger problem? We don't have a flash anymore. Yeah, we do. No, you don't. She's ready for all that. She's not. She's got your powers. Shh. Exactly. It's uh, like the writers are reading my mind. I want to do this. Okay. What? Okay. Right, uh, we'll monitor from here then. Really? Well, you can't go out there wearing that. Well, technically, she should have a suit before she goes out in the field. Technically. But okay, regular clothes are fine too, I guess. Right. Thank you, Jesse Quick. Why do they have Jesse's mask on Earth One? Please. Please be careful. Wouldn't she have taken that with her? To Earth Two? I would think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I How do I It's not your first time in Star Labs? A comedic moment is not, it doesn't make sense in in the lab that he's worked in for years now. He knows how all this works. Okay, I will admit the purple lightning is very cool. It's a very cool effect. But the nerd in me, the geek in me wants to know why it's purple. Here's Barry fire. being a coach. You gotta get in there and put out the fire, Iris. Suck all the oxygen out of the you know what to do. Just this thing this power thing that should just come supernaturally right i mean it didn't take barry like two seasons to really learn how to do a lot of his most basic stuff but sure it's making it worse. and see here i was thinking oh this is cool she's actually having trouble with it she's having trouble using her powers this was like the appropriate thing to happen honestly but I believe this is the last time that we have like a stumble with Iris using her powers. Phase. <laughs> yeah. You can't. Just phase. He's a horrible teacher. There's one thing Eobard's got on Barry. He's a much better teacher. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't ready. But see, she's already mad at Ralph. That's the thing. She's already mad because Ralph said what he said about her. So she's going to snap and be mad about it. And I could see if anyone else on the team had criticized her. But Ralph, of all people, you could have easily caught him when he was running away from you at normal human speed. You literally let him leave. Nobody called the police and said, hey, apprehend this guy running out the back of the building here. There's cameras everywhere where he was at in the hospital. It just, there was a million things you could have done, but the writers didn't want you to do it because they needed this episode to happen. So, of course, you do something really stupid. Just stay here like I always do. No, I Since when? Since when does she not go out in the field? She's only been leading the team for a short time. Before that, she was outside doing stuff. It just doesn't make sense. She's acting like she hasn't done anything before this, and she has. It's so frustrating. Because they needed you to lead the team. I mean, to some degree, she's right. You have the powers. They're going to need you to do something. But, but... That's not really why she's doing it. She's frustrated with Ralph and what he said to her. So I think that that's like, oh, this is the second reason why I'm doing it. And then, of course, Barry's like, I don't know. This is all like fan bait. It's 
basically baiting the fans of the shipping community to like be all about this and it's so weird well she's a speedster so not touching her should be pretty easy to for her to do and we get excited thinking this is going to be an awesome suit and i think it's literally like leggings is it still jesse's mask and iris's existing jacket that was already being worn oh geez this guy money okay so here we go this is number one in my complaint about this is that that much heat in that space would have caused a lot more damage but because it's so expensive to do fire and pyrotechnics we get this weird like vfx shot or whatever also Hold on, we'll talk about it in a second because I think there's a scene coming up in a second where it like really bugs me with his powers. So you can take my powers like you did his? And get ready, I'm gonna be nitpicking. So prepare for the nitpickness. Prepare for it. It's gonna happen. Cringe. Did he not know his powers could do that? Oh, whatever. I feel like he sh should have known that that would happen, but whatever. But look, his clothes, his pants, his jacket, the ground around him. The fire is not affecting that. So as hot as lava, she couldn't even stand that close. Matter of fact, nothing in that area would be like, I know it's a superhero show, but like this is a fire tornado just <laughs> jeez here we go they have no ideas they don't have any ideas to help iris no one in that room has ideas to help iris isn't this what caused barry to go back in time and they had so much, like, so many problems because of that. So a pep talk automatically allows characters to learn how to use powers they've never had before instantaneously. A pep talk. I just... And he's just standing here, making a fire tornado. Nothing, the ground's not melting around him. His clothes aren't melting. The flowers aren't catching on fire. This hot as lava fire tornado is literally contained just around him. This is a cool scene. I actually like the scene. I think the effects in this are really good. I really, really, really like it. But still doesn't change the fact that she should not be able to do this. But I don't know. Whatever. Also, Iris is so smart. I don't understand how she would be that confused on how to beat this guy. There's got to be so many other ways that this could have gone down. But, okay. They wanted this big scene. Here we go. And I'm not too sure. I think I did a little bit of research when we were talking about this in the live stream. I don't know if something as hot as lava would be extinguished by water. Because there's underwater volcanoes. So I, I don't know if that would work. But okay, I guess something hot as lava can just be put out by water. Okay. So now he's talking about, I thought I was cleaning up the city, but I was just making it worse. You held a scalpel to Iris's throat. You were threatening to actually kill her. Also, the idea that Barry was going to give Iris an option on whether or not to keep the powers. Ready? Yeah. Oh, what? Pandering. Sorry. Again, fan baiting and pandering. Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself, pal. 
That doesn't make it any better. Just because he didn't know. Oh, a higher purpose. I guess that higher purpose means taking people hostage and holding scalpels to their neck, threatening to kill them because you may have to fess up to your higher purpose or doing the right thing. His storyline does not add up. It doesn't add up at all. Whoever wrote this character was writing like three different characters. It just <laughs> this episode, awful. Just so many things wrong with it. Oh, jeez. We're already making jokes, guys. We're already making jokes. This guy can steal powers, and he did all this horrible stuff, but... Yeah! Humor. Season four. Awful. What's really odd to me is Barry is asking Iris to help him with training when the entire episode we were just in, Iris didn't really know what to do while she was out in the field but sure train with her and let her tell you what you should be doing because that makes sense i thought this whole this situation between her and ralph in this episode just felt weird like even watching it back now it feels really really weird No, that's not, that's, okay. Not entirely true. She accepted her fate and she was going to give in to being killed by Savitar. So, I don't know. I just remember how awful Ralph was this season. I hated his character so much. Every single after party that Paige and I did, I was like, just anti-Ralph, anti-Ralph, anti-Ralph. I was like, I don't like this guy. He's absolutely awful. He's absolutely horrible. Finally, his character eventually grew on me. But in this season, I just hated everything about Ralph. Well, maybe not his powers and stuff, but yeah. It wasn't her speed. Newsflash, it was your speed. Her not giving it back to you would have been a total... Bad move. It's just it's being the light that everyone stupid. It, this whole comment was meant to set up this conversation here. Why'd you do it? Iris, why did you give back your speed? Why did you give it back? Well, Barry, I gave it back because it wasn't mine to begin with. I got it accidentally and it's your power and me keeping it would make me a horrible person. But you know what? Thank you for asking. No problem, Iris. You were a much better Flash than me. It was so awesome having you as the Flash. I would never, ever ask you to give me the powers back because, you know, my years of training and how could we, how could I not live together with you in harmony after you kept powers that were rightfully mine? Why not? Dumb. Dumb. All set up for this moment here. <laughs> I, I honestly wish that the writers would give... Iris, the kind of story she deserves without pandering and creating this really bad narrative with her. That's why I'm glad Eric Wallace has done something different with her as a character. Because I feel like she deserves better than what she got. This, this is the Todd Helbing concept of what Iris is the character. She is simply there to fill in spaces, fill in gaps. And um, he's okay with doing that for her. Okay, guys, so that was my reaction to Run, Iris, Run from Season 4 of The Flash. And now it's time for my rant and review, the retro rant and review portion of this, which actually is like my only rant and review because I never did one. So this is the only rant and review for that episode. <laughs> it's kind of weird that I never did one for this. Uh, so the episode was pretty awful. It didn't really change my mind on it at all. There were just so many problems with this episode and it could have been so good. I mean, I guess the positives are, I think Iris looked really cool with the purple lightning and all the stuff she did in the episode, like with the wave and everything. I guess all of that's kind of cool. And, but everybody else in the episode was pretty poorly represented or written. The only two characters I think that really made any sense were Cisco and Harry. Uh, Ralph was there just simply to 
push the narrative along about the threat of the, you know, the bus metas and to annoy Iris into everything that happened. Like literally everything that happened in this episode was because Ralph was being Ralph. He was being annoying. Um, we got to see the setup for Nora's suit, which is why the jacket exists in the first place. Another thing is the Cisco, like the, the reveal of the suit really wasn't a suit. And I know he said, well, it's like short time, you know, didn't have a lot of time to do it or whatever. Still, it was kind of like, what's the point? Um, this was like, a again, I, I, I guess I'll call this a fan bait episode because it's like baiting the fans of, you know, a character or a ship or whatever to tune in and watch the episode. Because if you think about it, a lot of it, like, like Caitlin was completely worthless in this episode. Barry was kind of a bumbling idiot. I mean, he didn't try to catch Matthew Kim when he was running away at normal speed. He just let him get away. There was a million things they could have done in that moment to capture that guy. But they didn't. The powers of the the heat powers or whatever that, you know, money guy got or, and whatnot, they didn't even function the way they should have. Like the fact that he was just burning things up in concentrated spaces while still giving off the heat of like lava or, you know, the sun or, or whatever you want to call it. It just it didn't make a lot of sense. And I realize these are superheroes and I shouldn't be so nitpicky, but powers have to sort of make sense in the flash because these are humans that are given meta human powers. So there has to be some rational reason for why their powers function the way they do. And this guy's didn't. It was simply to give Iris an antagonist for the episode, which, again, you know, and Iris learning how to do things with the powers so soon, like the tidal wave and everything. That's exactly what caused Barry to screw with time. And, you know, the first time he did something like that. So all of these are things that just should not have happened so early with the character of Iris. And I guess the, the biggest thing for me, the one thing that really sort of just sets me off on this whole tangent, I guess, and when I want to rant about it, is that Barry acting like Iris giving his powers back to him was ever actually a choice and then being thankful that she was willing to do it. Really? That is probably, out of everything in this episode that bugs me and feels like it's pandering to like a very specific portion of the fan base, I absolutely feel like in that moment, it crossed the line for me and really felt like the worst form of pandering at all. Because these are Barry's powers. Like, if you're in a relationship with somebody and they lose something so integral to who they are and you gain that... And you have the ability to give that back to them and make them whole again. Would you even consider not doing that? It's so fundamentally corrupt and wrong that we would even like the writers are giving Iris a choice as if she would choose to keep Barry's powers and that her giving them back to him is somehow virtuous, but it's not. It's simply the right thing to do and giving her that choice and making it a plot point in several conversations, at least two conversations in this episode. And then I think maybe it comes up later in the season. Just the, the whole idea that she could have ever even considered like keeping the powers just seems, it's just bad writing, this whole episode. Um, and I, again, I think that's why it's number three out of all the episodes ever of The Flash. It's, it's number three in the in the worst episodes ranked by uh, viewers and stuff. I, I mean, on IMDb, it's got it's it's a 5.4. That's the score. And I would actually rank it lower than that. I don't even really think it's a watchable episode. And if you've ever watched my scores from my rant and reviews, a five makes it like watchable to me. If you get that five, that means it's totally okay to sit down and watch it. And I would watch it again if I was watching the whole season. I would actually give this less than a five. And the only reason why is because it is one of those episodes where it literally doesn't do much for the characters. The only real, like, I guess, redeeming qualities for it is that it pushes Harry's little thinking cap thing along. There's a little thing at the end, which I'm probably, I probably cut it out of this because it wasn't really relevant to what I was doing in the episode. But we get a little bit at the end where we find out who the other bus metas are and that the thinking cap actually works. And that's pretty much the gist of the episode. Outside of that, it is setting up the jacket to be part of Nora's costume when she shows up. Outside of that, really nothing else in this episode mattered much. And it didn't really do much for Iris's story, except for the fact that she was writing at the end of the episode, which again, we, 
jumped through some odd hurdles with Todd Helbing to get to where we needed to be. Eric Wallace understands the character of Iris much better, way better than anyone who has handled her since the beginning of the show. I feel like Iris in season six has been pretty awesome. I mean, the, the Iris that we got, not the mirror Iris, but that just goes to show that Candace Patton has been really good about playing, you know, two versions of the same character. So hats off to her for that. But, you know, Eric Wallace seems to understand what direction to take Iris. And other than the amount of time she spent in the mirror universe in season six, I was very happy with where she was as a character. Todd Helbing obviously didn't really know what to do with Iris. So we ended up with episodes, these bottle episodes where Iris was the forefront of the episode and the episode was poorly written. It was absolutely awful. So there you have it. That is my retro <laughs> reaction rant and review for season four of the flash run Iris run. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me. There's going to be a lot of people that love this episode. That's fine. I think if you take it out of the show's world and look at it as a bottle episode, as a standalone episode, there are some things that you could probably overlook. There's probably a lot of things you could overlook. But from the standpoint of The Flash as a series and the characters on the show, there are too many things here, too many problems here for me to just ignore. And looking at where the show is now and going back and looking at this, I just can't change my mind about it. Absolutely awful. I would probably score this like a three, a three out of 10. Watching it back, it's even worse. So, I mean, I probably would have given it a slightly higher score the first time I watched it, maybe. I don't even remember what I thought of it, honestly. I do remember that some of the things that annoyed me still annoy me now. So, uh, there you have it. That's it. <laughs> you guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you stick around. I've got two more Flash episodes uh, that I'm going to watch and retro react, rant, and review to. Just for you guys and for science, of course. Uh, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and become part of the Ericverse. If you'd like to support the channel another way, you can hit the join button and become part of Team Eric. You get all kinds of cool perks you can use during my live stream, including emojis and some custom badges. All of that's there for you. I'm watching Lucifer right now from season one. Never watched it before, watching it totally blind. I'm up to episode four. And you can find all of that behind the join button for Team Eric. Also, leave a comment down below and make sure you give me a like if you enjoyed this video because it helps the channel grow. It's free and it's a cool thing to do to, to be a nice person. So maybe leave a like for me. That would be great. Um, also, check over here. There's going to be some stuff on the screen. Click on these. See what you think. Um, and yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. So have a great evening. Bye.